thousand out under Pepco's jurisdiction. That's fifty one thousand in D.C. One hundred and seventy five thousand. These are customers in Montgomery County and one hundred thousand in Prince George's County. So it's more than a million total. We're hearing now as, as and of course it, that number is only getting higher. And all of this, of course, because of a storm that came through here very, very quickly. Uh, we did have warning, though, Doug, you've been tracking this thing all day long, right? Yeah, really, Jim. I and mean, we, we talked about this at 4 o'clock, at 5 o'clock, mm -hmm. and again at 6 o'clock. And, uh, you know, Kim Martucci and I were in here. Kim Martucci was helping me this afternoon, and we were just talking about the sheer potential that this storm had. Because anytime you see a storm like this developing, around the Chicago land area, down through Indiana, and then Ohio, and you see it moving into an area that has just had record heat. And again, we didn't just set a record for the day. We set an all-time monthly record today with 104 degrees. But our dew points were still at 70. That is extremely moist air that's sitting there ready, just ready for something to come in and send it up into the atmosphere and get these storms going. And that's exactly what we've seen out there today. I want to show you right now where the strongest winds are going to be. Southern St. Mary's County. I just got a report out of Central St. Mary's County or uh, Central Calvert County of some extreme wind there. Waldorf, 71 mile an hour wind just 15 minutes ago. Waldorf, we talked about you seeing the strongest winds, 71 miles an hour towards Waldorf. You can expect the same now. Chesapeake Ranch Estates, Valley Lee, Patuxent Air Station, Naval Air Station. If you live in southern St. Mary's County and you're along the bay here or even in the northern neck, get ready for these 70 to 80 mile an hour winds. They are going to continue to move on through here. I'm going to go back and show you guys the entire line here. And again, I'm going back in my slideshow here. You can see this line sweeping on through the area. Baltimore, by the way, just reported a 66 mile an hour wind gust. You also see the little spin here. There's a little spin here, and that little spin helped to push that whole thing right on through our region. That's why we saw another reason why we saw those 70, 80 mile an hour winds. You talked about Bowie. Here's where Derek Ward is right here over towards Bowie. The heaviest rain is now well past Bowie. Still a little bit of rain there, but the wind has now died down. Annapolis, you're probably seeing the rain, but you're no longer seeing the strong winds. So once again, I want to show you that entire line and watch this thunderstorm. Watch all this lightning bolts here. The most lightning now up there towards Baltimore, but still right along the Chesapeake Bay, now making its way over towards the Delmarva and the Eastern Shore. Doug Sandbot is a question I want to ask you in a yep. minute, but first we want to go to Shamari Stone. We understand he's in Northwest DC right now, but headed up towards Bethesda, and he's coming to us via Skype. What are you seeing out there, Shamari? Well, right now, I see a lot of people who are just trying to figure out what is going on. This storm just came basically out of nowhere for a lot of folks. Everything was calmed, and all of a sudden, there was a lot of wind gust at least 70 miles per hour there was a lot of folks who were just running for cover basically now we were trying to drive through rock creek park and the, the area had a lot of down trees that were blocking the roads through rock creek park so if you plan on doing that i suggest you stay away also we then tried to circle back by the monument on independence avenue uh, I okay. Think we lost him. Yeah, Shamari was on Skype, but apparently uh, he, we have lost his signal. And he's speaking about trees being down in Rock Creek Park, which is no surprise. We would assume that there are trees down all over the place. Right, Shamari, are you back. back now? Yeah, I'm back right now. Go ahead, um, continue. Keep in mind, hey, modern technology dealing with Skype, but just trying to bring our viewers the latest information. There were a lot of downed trees, as you just mentioned, Jim, throughout Rock Creek Park. Right now, we're making a left here from Harvard Street onto uh, 16th. And uh, my photographer here, Joe Cassano, what was it like driving through that, Joe? It was a complete mess. It just rain was sideways, branches flying, tents flying. It just came out of nowhere. It was a total mess. And basically right now, we're hearing that there's a lot of damage in the Bethesda area. That's where we're driving in a safe way to Bethesda. Um, also, by if you plan on going through Independence Avenue, stay away. There are porta johns that are blocking the entire roadway. So, if you planned on going there, make sure you you know avoid that area. Jim, All right, Shamari, thank you very much, and yeah. thanks for the advice. Certainly, nobody wants to run into a porta john in the middle they, of uh, Independence. Maybe anyway. from the Folklife Festival. I, I don't. Know. Not a good idea, Doug. Can I, I get know. back to you for a second? Because we saw the you know your. Um, 
line of uh, the storm line coming through. We saw all the lightning and all of that. Mm -hmm. Earlier today, you were talking about that hook echo thing with the storm, you know, that kind of bows like the that. The bow echo, yeah. What I have, a bow echo. Mm -hmm. What I have not heard you say all evening long is any word about tornadoes. And I'm curious yeah. to know, how come this uh, storm like this doesn't create a tornado. Very good, very good observation, Jim. And that's the reason why anytime you have these bow echoes, a lot of times these bow echoes, they only push the air out in front of them. There's really not that swirling of the wind. Now, that being said, we did have a couple of tornadoes reported with this storm back into portions of Ohio and even some uh, tornado warnings in through northern West Virginia and parts of Maryland or parts of uh, Maryland right here. And you notice there is a little spin. That's the spin I was just talking about that right now is around Baltimore, but the line line itself, that's what we saw, that line itself is just pushing off to the east. You do not see that turning, that, that, that turning motion within these storms. They are just moving off to the east, and those storms allow the wind from aloft, and that's what's happening. These winds are, you know, 5,000 feet up, and they're moving at 70, 80 miles an hour. Those storms move into that wind and allow that wind to just come right down to the surface, and that's why we have such strong winds with storms. The other thing I was going to ask you, often when storms come from west to east, mm -hmm. they break up or at least dissipate to some yeah. extent coming over the mountains over the Alleghenies. Yes. This one apparently did not. Uh -huh, but, it, but it did. It and did. This, yes, and this is what, what we predicted too, and we were talking about this. The line actually did start to break up a little bit. If we go back far enough here, you'd actually see the red line coming in, hit the Allegheny Mountains, and then just kind of disperse just a little bit. But we knew as soon as it hit that energy, that hot air that's sitting right along the Blue Ridge, that's when it literally just flared right back up. So I'll take you back just a couple of hours here, and I'll take, take you back on 29 here, and that's exactly where we are. Let's go ahead and go back here, and I'm going to show you. Watch how this storm comes over the mountain. So see this right here? See that bow echo right there, Jim? I do. Now watch this. Watch it move over the mountains, okay? And you lose yeah, a lot yeah, of that. Yeah, you lose okay. a lot of the red. And right. then watch when mm -hmm. it hits... Watch when it hits right here. Here's the Blue Ridge, okay? There's okay. the Blue Ridge. Watch when it hits right there. I'm going to take that, uh, that little guy back off right here if I can do that. If it's going to let me. Nope, it's not going to let me. That's all right. I'm going to do this. Watch when it hits the Blue Ridge. All right. Boom! Yeah. Right back into the purple, and that's why we saw those strong winds. Once it, hit those, uh, once it hit that hot air with yeah. those winds of 80, uh, uh, of uh, those temperatures of 100, 100 degrees, we were at 98 degrees at 8 o'clock tonight. Right. 98. So once it hit that hot air, they can run back up. Okay, but as Wendy said earlier, we're here talking about people who have wedding plans and other things for tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. We don't have to worry about this happening again, do we? It, would this severe? Would it be this severe if, the, if it cooked up something tomorrow? Possibly. And, and that's the that's the that's the, the, the problem here is because again we have these strong winds uh, or we have these high temperatures of 100 miles an hour. It doesn't take a whole lot. So I showed you that storm out in Chicago right now. This storm came from Chicago. That storm in Chicago, if it held, holds together, and most of the time they don't hold together overnight, but a new storm could develop tomorrow, and yes, we could see this happen again. We're going to watch that very closely. I do not think we'd see this happen again across the region. Guys, I'm going to check another warning real quick. I'll come right back to you just to make sure okay. uh, of all these warnings that are going and, and on right and now. And we're just going to run down through, once again, all the power outages. We have, all, we have essentially a million people without power. Pepco has more than 300,000. Dominion, more than 400,000. BG&E, more than 400,000. Allegheny and Smeco uh, together, about 30,000. 30, so that's... Uh, so, so that's uh, a, a, a tremendous amount of people. And as we heard from Myra Opal of Pepco just a short while ago, uh, it could take, because again, these winds that Doug has been talking about were so severe and they're so, I mean, we know our, our old infrastructure with our, our old model of power lines, that it could take them, she said days, plural, to get everyone back up, which, which is frightening when you consider we got 100 degrees tomorrow and no one wants to live through uh, that without air conditioning. No. So, uh, <laughs> so that hopefully uh, it's not going to be as bad as that, but right now they are still in ass assessment mode uh, as these storms, the tail end of it moves through the the main part of our area and heads out over the uh, over the bay and gets out of here. So they are still assessing the damage and, and trying to figure out just how long it's going to take to get everyone back up. It's interesting. Pepco has been trying for months and months after all the trouble they had with storms in the past couple of years to reduce the damage potential from trees and lines by cutting down limbs and cutting down trees. A lot of people have been complaining about the amount of trees that they've been cutting. Um, and now, in spite of right, all of that right. effort, well, we still have green. trees down 
all well, over the we're place. a green area, and that's why in a lot right. of these new developments, they're putting the lines underground so that we don't have that. But we, you know, we've Which got. Which helps a lot. It helps a lot, but that, that's yeah. incremental. One so. more time, this is one of those kind of uh, uh, incidents uh, that demonstrates that man proposes and God disposes. <laughs> uh, these storms came through here very, very quickly. Yeah. Uh, one moment it was just hot, the next thing you look up, and here's an 80 mile an hour wind coming across your way and then the rain came right after that. As Wendy noted, we have a million people now that are without power. Doug, though, tells us that the good news is this is not likely to happen again tomorrow, but he will not say that it won't happen again tomorrow. <laughs> Apparently, uh, the storm got all of its energy because the temperatures are so hot and then there's this uh, fierce wind going along at about 5,000 feet above us and we got these kinds of conditions that create this kind of storm. Fortunately, we have no word in here at this point in our offices uh, of any injuries or anything worse than that yeah. from these storms. We, nor do we have a great deal of information as it regards uh, property damage. We can uh, be assured that there probably is a goodly bit of it with all these trees down. But I want to know if we get any credit for like meteorology, uh, for a meteorology credit tonight for this little lesson we've gotten in this. Uh, do we, uh, well, is, this, we is, this can be applied towards a course at college, yeah. Doug? Yeah, if we don't, can we, we should. Uh, I mean, can so we get far some credit for this? about a half a credit. Yeah, that like goes it. a long way, and and you put that on to the other half of credit you earned, you know, last week, and then when the with uh, Irene last year, you guys have earned about two credits so far, so you're well well on your way. Yeah, yeah well, we, and we, all we need now is th uh, thermal cloud dynamics, and uh, and we'll be on our way. You're on a roll yourself. <laughs> just pulled out thermal cloud dynamics. Ah, uh, you think you know me? She's that been, was very good. <laughs> she's been practicing that for yeah. weeks. Yeah, I'm sure. Guys, Doug, I, we assuming that these storms are now uh, have they are into the bay or have they already crossed the bay? What, what, what are we looking at now? Well, right now those storms are moving in toward the bay, but still a lot of lightning associated with these in through Anne Arundel County, uh, in through Calvert County, down through portions of St. Mary's County. You're still seeing lightning and then up towards Baltimore County, this is where, where they're really getting hammered, but it's across the bay now in towards the eastern shore where the heaviest winds are. Here's what the next problem is going to be. The winds have died down. The rain has now moved out. We have about 1.2, if I did the math correctly, 1.2 people now without power in our area. We're going to be up around 100 degrees again tomorrow. I would seriously urge, and this is the counties and this is the cities, you know, make sure you have some kind of shelters. I know we have Red Cross. I know we have things like that. But when we're talking about extreme heat, and now we have 1.2 people, 1.2 million people without power, that could be without power for days. And we're not just going to see the heat tomorrow. We're going to see the heat come back during the day on Sunday, probably into Monday, and most of next week. This really needs to be a concern now for the cities, for the municipalities, maybe open up some high schools, maybe open them any place that has some power so that we can get some air conditioning in through these places. I mean, Jim, you and I were talking about this a little bit earlier today. Uh, when, when you were younger, you didn't have air conditioning. You guys went to the movies. Yeah, we went to the movies, or if we didn't, we used our imaginations and found all other kinds of things to do. But that's easy to say now because mm -hmm. that was then. This is now. These kids are raised on things that they use their thumbs with and require power. So God knows what a whole, a whole lot of parents are going to be doing tomorrow to uh, keep these kids entertained, except take them to the pool. Uh, right. That is if the pool pumps are still working and because, you know, we may have to close and, the pool And if not, there's the, the slip and slide and there's the uh, just go play in the play in the sprinkler. Yeah, there's all kinds of things to do. Uh, we should point out, though, as we talked earlier with Assistant Chief Scott Graham with the uh, Montgomery County Fire and Rescue, his advice is that if you don't have to go outside tonight, it's probably a good idea not to because uh, we don't have in our studios right now a full assessment of all the damage and the uh, street closures and all the trees that are down everywhere but you can pretty much be uh, you can pretty much assume and be assured that there are probably road closures all over this place and uh, consider yourself fortunate and grateful that you can still listen to us because you do have power because there are about a million people in our broadcast area that are without people that are without power right now uh, we would like to hope that nobody else will be because the storm has moved through our area it is gone uh, but still some caution might be worthy because there are lines down all over the place and there are still lightning strikes. Apparently, Doug was I telling us earlier. One. I, I, I got caught say. that in the corner of my eye. The window they are back not here. Cloud to cloud lightning strikes. These are all cloud right. to ground lightning strikes. And Doug tells us uh, that there are tens of thousands of them. We don't have much more information for you right now. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we would assume that 
Doug, I guess we can begin to wrap this up because yeah. this thing is done and gone, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty much. For we have uh, just a couple more areas of uh, getting this down towards Calvert County. Calvert County really seeing the heaviest rain right now and down towards uh, St. Mary's County. But the winds are now out of our area. That has been the threat throughout the rest or, or throughout the earlier part of the evening. So the threat. I think is gone for now. Let me just uh, widen out here just to make sure that we're also out up to the north. Yes, Annapolis, you are now out of it.